Hey there, Euro. Today we're going to chat for just a little bit about the French wars of religion. Now keep in mind this is sort of a minor topic. We're not going to go into every single little detail. If you're looking for a comprehensive treatment of the French wars of religion, you better swerve because that's not what this is. Now the first thing you need to know about are the Huguenots. Now John Calvin in a spacesuit is what I think about. Imagine an astronaut but not. Actually, they're on Earth, so it's kind of the opposite of an astronaut, but it sounds okay. But the Huguenots, these are French Protestants, French Calvinists uh, that subscribe to the doctrines of John Calvin, which I'll address in another lecture. These people went around in their plain clothing and their plain churches and believed that the Pope was the Antichrist. And they were scattered throughout France, a lot of them in commercial centers and uh, in other places as well. But France had a substantial Protestant minority. Keep in mind that France was very much a Catholic country and today um, still the vast majority of religious people in France are Catholic. But the Protestant minority was substantial and this is an age before we figured out how to get along with each other. So there are lots of conflicts between the Catholics and the Protestants. And at the center of these conflicts was Catherine de' Medici the Queen of France, who was from the Medici family in Italy and married into the French royal family. Her husband croaked uh, when she was still uh, pretty young and had a lot of time to live, and she had three sons. These three sons were the last of the Valois dynasty. Did I say that right, Dennis? Guess I did. It's a written test. This is the end of the Valois dynasty will be Catherine's three sons. Now, Catherine was acting as queen regent uh, during their reigns uh, and pretty much manipulated all three of these sons, kind of like somebody would do with puppets or something like that. So keep in mind that Catherine's sons are on the throne, but Catherine is pulling the strings. The most noteworthy event of the French Wars of Religion is the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. And about 20,000 Protestants are killed during this massacre. Yes, that is Waldo over there. 20,000 Protestants are killed. So really, St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, you just have to remember a bunch of Catholics killed a bunch of Protestants in France during the French Wars of Religion. Check. You got your exam question correct. Enter Henry IV, uh, or Henry of Navarre, as he was known before he became king. But Henry was the Protestant ruler of Navarre, was a Huguenot, and he defeated the Catholic League in the last of these wars of religion and became king. Now, the thing is, he's Protestant and he's becoming king of an overwhelmingly Catholic country, which is also even more overwhelmingly Protestant in the capital of Paris. So what does he do? He converts to Catholicism. His quote uh, is often, Paris is worth a mass. And so he says, look, if I can be king, I can become Catholic. Now, of course, in the time of the Reformation, a lot of people would have equated that with making a deal with the Antichrist. But that's not how Henry saw it. Henry represents a new faction in European politics known as well, as some of my students have said before, politicue. Now, no, that's, yeah, Dennis, I know it's not that. That, that is a uh, mispronunciation, but keep in mind, again, it's a written test. Uh, so if you mispronounce some of these French words, not that big of a deal. But the right way to pronounce this is politique. And these are people who believe that political concerns should be placed above religious concerns. That we should think about France being united as a country before we start a obsessing over what branch of Christianity we're part of, or anything like that. So Henry represents this faction of politiques. Another politique is Cardinal Richelieu, which uh, we'll talk about Cardinal Richelieu when we talk about the Thirty Years' War in another lecture. 
Cardinal Richelieu is going to side with the Protestants in the Thirty Years' War, although he is a Catholic. Now, Henry's going to tick off a lot of his Protestant brethren by converting to Catholicism, but he does intend to throw them a bone. We'll never know whether Henry's conversion was sincere or not, given the circumstances, probably not. So in 1598, Henry issues the Edict of Nantes, or not, however, Nantes. It's a written test. So that's how I'm going to say it. The Edict of Nantes said that Protestants, French, Calvinist were going to be tolerated under certain circumstances as long as they lived in certain cities. This is not full-scale religious toleration, but toleration for Huguenots in various towns and cities in France where they tended to predominate. Uh, there could not be a Huguenot church in Paris, and Huguenots were not permitted to assemble publicly in Paris. But the point here was that France was going to continue to be a Catholic country, but at the same time, Huguenots under certain circumstances and in certain places were able to practice their religion. So the Edict of Nantes was a landmark decision in the progress of religious toleration, but keep in mind we're not going to full-blown religious toleration yet. And Henry establishes a new dynasty, the House of Bourbon, which would continue to rule France all the way to the time of the French Revolution. So out with the Valois dynasty, in with the Bourbon dynasty. So a quick review. First of all, you need to know who the Huguenots are. These are French Protestants, specifically Calvinists. You also need to know Catherine de' Medici, the Queen of France, who ruled France through her sons. And Catherine was the chief architect, or one of the chief architects, behind the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, which was Catholics killing Protestants. Then we need to know about Henry IV or Henry of Navarre. First of all, that he was a politique, that he converted to Catholicism because it was worth a mass. He issued the Edict of Nantes, which gave French Protestants limited toleration to practice their own religion, and he was also the first French monarch of the House of Bourbon. And that about sums up the French Wars of Religion, tells you everything you need to know about the exam. Keep in mind that you're free to subscribe to my channel if this was helpful to you and you want to see more historical goodness and prepare for your AP Euro exam. So go ahead and subscribe if you like, and stay tuned for a few more more videos that may be relevant. Until next time, my friends.